welcome back to my channel. This is Heidi from My Reading Life, and welcome to the start of my mid-month book bash vlog. So mid-month book bash is an event started by Doris over at Aldi Books, where we try to read as much as we can in the second weekend of every month, just to sort of get things moving, because sometimes months start out slowly when it comes to reading. Um, and today is Saturday, July the 8th. And I didn't get a chance to do my introduction yesterday. I had a long work day and then it was really, really hot and I just never got a chance to film this intro. So I'm filming it now and I'm going to tell you what I am planning to read for the weekend. I did just finish this morning listening to on audiobook. Um, the World of Curiosities by Louise Penny, which is the latest installment in her Inspector Gamache mystery series, uh, which takes place in Three Pines, Quebec in Canada. I've been a longtime fan of this series, um, and this is like book, I don't even know, somewhere in the late teens, I think, maybe early 20s in this series. So, um, and it, the story, the central mystery rests around some previous cases that occurred earlier in um, the series. So I can't really talk about the plot line, uh, but all the familiar characters are involved in the storyline. It does mostly take place in Three Pines, uh, which is this tiny little village in Quebec. And I just really love the series and the audiobooks are really fantastic. Um, I listen to the ones that are read by Robert, I think it's Robert Bathurst. Um, is the narrator and uh, they're just they're just lovely to listen to. So the last two days, Thursday and Friday, I had uh, field work and I had uh, quite a bit of driving that I had to do. So I listened to the majority of the audiobook over those two days and then only had like an hour left to listen this morning. Um, so I just finished that up and it was very satisfying the way that it ended. Um, these are, the mysteries are kind of like slow burn. I would call them more literary mysteries uh, rather than like a fast paced thriller type of a mystery. Um, but if you like that style, I would definitely recommend this series. Although I will say the first couple books in the series are not great. So um, it takes a few books to get going. And now that it's late in the series, they're very, very good. So that was what I've finished so far at this mid-month book bash. Um, and today, I should say as well, is uh, my husband and I's anniversary. We've been married 28 years today. Um, so that's kind of amazing <laughs> and kind of blows my mind. But we're not doing anything particularly exciting for our anniversary. We're here at our camp on the lake um, for the weekend. We've been up here for the week since the holiday weekend last weekend. Um, and really our anniversary to each other was, um, our trip to Europe a few, uh, uh, just a month or so ago. So, but just wanted to mention that that is what today is. So the first thing I'll be working on is this book that I'm buddy reading with Britta Buller. This is The Terraformers by Annalee Newitz. This is a science fiction novel that takes place in the far future on a terraformed planet. Uh, and it is like, 60,000 years into the future and um, humans have this ability to like basically get life started on these planets and to try to uh, like fast pace the formation of another earth type planet and um, this book is interesting in that it's split up into three parts and each part is like a novella that are related but not the same specific characters so the first, uh, we've read the first section and we're in part two of this and I'm really enjoying it. I think there's a lot of environmental themes in this book as well as themes about who is a person, who can be considered a person, how do we, how do we acknowledge um, the humanity, not the humanity, how do we acknowledge the consciousness and the feelings and the um, personhood of, of, any living creature. Um, why is it just humans that are considered people? And looking at themes like that, along with all these environmental themes of how do you take care of um, a planet and ecosystems, I really find this super uh, thought provoking and um, really enjoying my time spent with this book. So I need to read the second half of part two today in order to check in with Breda on this one. So that will be the next thing that I am working on. And then I also need to finish up my section for this book, Do Not Say We Have Nothing by Madeline Tien, which I am buddy reading um, with Joe Smith and Kim from Middle of the Wood 
middle of the book march um and this is literary fiction it's a dual timeline narrative uh that takes place in modern day canada as well as historical china following family members you know different generations of the same family um, and how they're tied together there's a lot in here having to do with music a lot having to do with um the historical uh happenings in china and how that has impacted people in the present day um i don't it's it's kind of slow pace so far i've been about uh, 120 pages into this and i need to read to page 143 to in order to check in with my buddies so i don't really have any fully formed clear thoughts about this one yet but so i'll be working on this one next after the science fiction book and then a third buddy read that i'm be working on this weekend sorry for the glare here this is the last englishman uh, the Life of J.L. Carr by Byron Rogers, and this is a book that I'm buddy reading with Sean the Book Maniac, and I will be finishing this book up this weekend for our final check-in on Monday. I've really been enjoying this biography. I don't often read um, literary biographies, but this one is a fantastic one. Uh, Byron Rogers is a journalist, I believe, and so he, this biography the narrative of this biography is much different than say like a presidential biography which is the types of biographies that i'm normally reading it's much funnier um it's very uh witty and um the anecdotes that are being shared are are quite uh amusing plus the historical time period within which this book is set is really interesting as well jl carr um was born in the early part of the 20th century and uh traveled to the United States to teach for a year right before World War II, so in the late 30s, which was Great Depression time period. Um, so that was super fascinating. He traveled around the world right as World War II was starting, um, was uh, involved in World War II as, uh, in the RAF, and then was a headmaster at a school in Great Britain after the war. So like his life just was, he's, he had a very interesting life, very fascinating person, He's not um, a straightforward person at all. He kept a lot of pieces of himself hidden from others. He was a very private person. Um, and he, he, it was really hard to get to know him. So each person that knew him knew him in a different way. So, you know, people that knew him from his, his writing, because he, he became an author later in life in his middle age. Um, each person knew him, you know, they might know him from his writing work or his teaching work or from the military or, you know, just different aspects. They knew an entirely different person, you know, just depending on which aspect of his life they knew him from. So it's been a, just a fantastic book to read. And Sean and I have had a great deal of fun reading and discussing this book. So yeah, really excellent. Um, J.L. Carr is the author. I should have said this right in the beginning, but he's the author of uh, one of my favorite books, A Month in the Country, which is a beautiful novella um, written about a soldier who um, after the war comes home to England and then works to restore a mural in an old church. Um, and it's just, it's just a really thoughtful and thought provoking book and I love it. So that is the third buddy read that I'll be working on. Um, and then there's one more, <laughs> lest you think that's all the buddy reads, I will be starting this book this weekend, The Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver. I'll be reading this with uh, Sandy from Miss Reads A Lot and uh, her friend Sonia. And um, I'm really looking forward to this. Of course, uh, this book's been winning all sorts of prizes. There is, uh, I know, mixed feelings on this one. Some people have really liked it. Other people have not. Um, I am just interested to see what I think about it. And um, we shall see. So, But this cover is really, really fabulous. So I'm excited to get started on that one. That's the fourth and final buddy read that I'll be working on this weekend. Also working on, still, speaking of biographies, still working on um, Wilson by A. Scott Berg, which is a presidential biography about Woodrow Wilson. Um, sorry for the glare. This is a library copy. Uh, and I have been working on this one for over a month, or no, I guess just about a month, and I'm only on page 240 um, because I've had so many other things that I've been working on. I haven't really spent any focused time on this one. Um, so yeah, I, I may dip in and out of this one this weekend as well. So that's where we are with Mid-Month Book Bash for July. And um, like I said, we're up here at the lake at camp. So I should have some time to read today. So let's hope I can get some progress made in all of these books. <music>
it's Sunday and I figured I'd do a little quick check-in because I finished one of my books that I was reading, um, The Last Englishman, The Life of J.L. Carr by Byron Rogers. This is a literary biography that I've been buddy reading with Sean over at Sean the Book Maniac. And I really loved this. I thought this was a really excellent biography. I will also say that it is less than 300 pages, which I firmly endorse in biographies. <laughs> I endorse a shorter biography for sure. And this book is very um, accessible. It's very written in a very engaging manner by a journalist um, who has... Uh, sorry, I have a cat hair on my face here, I think, from Libby, um, who is really, he loved his subject. He was, he personally knew J.L. Carr, and he clearly had a great deal of affection for Carr, and he also understood that Carr was a very difficult person. Like, sorry, the cat just jounced my arm there. Um, that he was a very difficult person. He was not a, he was not a very open person. He uh, kept a lot of things to himself and he was very enigmatic, I would say. And he um, came to writing late in life in his middle age and he had quite an interesting life up until that point. So this biography is really interesting. Each chapter um, talks about a separate part of a car's life, um, his so like his childhood is one chapter and then his um, school years is another chapter and then he goes away and teaches in uh out in north dakota north dakota or south dakota one of the dakotas in the united states for a year um comes back he's in world war ii fights in world war ii comes back is a headmaster at an elementary school um and then becomes an author and a publisher he runs his own publishing house for a while and he does all these super interesting things and he just has all these different segments of his life he was really involved in trying to save a church at one point which is uh where part of the story uh, a month in the country came from which is a fantastic novel. If you have not yet read it, I would highly recommend that novel. So yeah, really, really enjoyed this biography. Would recommend, um, especially if you've read A Month in a Country, A Month in the Country and enjoyed it, I would highly recommend this biography. Uh, I've been working on my other reads as well. I've been reading Do Not Say We Have Nothing this afternoon um, and read some in the Terraformers as well. Um, so yeah, I've been getting quite a bit of reading done. It's quite warm today. We're back at home. We're no longer at camp because it's Sunday and tomorrow starts a new work week. So yeah, that's, that's the update. And, um, yeah, I've been pretty pleased with my reading so far during this mid-month book bash and we'll, sh we'll see how much more I can get done. <music> So I figured I'd better close out this vlog uh, for mid-month book bash. I apologize for the raspy voice. Um, part of the reason that this vlog hasn't had more sort of vlog clips in it is that the whole family has gotten sick with some kind of a summer cold. So yeah, that just means I've spent an awful lot of time reading and not so much time sort of being out and about and doing fun things that I could film for this vlog. Um, I did have to work today and uh, yeah, so apologize for my disheveled look, but yeah, it was a field day and I'm now at the end of it. And so yeah, I'm looking a little disheveled, but I have good news to report. I have made really good progress in all of the things that I've been reading. So I am currently reading Do Not Say We Have Nothing by Madeline Tien. This is a buddy read with Kim from Middle of the Book March and Joe Smith. 
I am currently on page 212. We've had our first check-in on the first 145 pages of this literary fiction novel. This is a slow-paced book, um, but sort of now that I'm in this past 150 page mark, I'm currently, did I say where I am? Yeah, I'm currently at 212. I feel like I've gotten into the flow of the story, which is basically a family saga. It's told in two timelines. We're following um, two girls in modern day Canada, uh, both of whom are immigrant families from uh, China, Marie and Aling, and they are connected because their dads were best friends in, in a music conservatory when they were young, young men. Um, and we're getting flashbacks to this story of a, um, a, a fictional story that sort of got passed around their families and pulled everybody together during the time of the revolutionary period in China. And we're seeing what happens to all these different members of the family during that time period in China, historical time period in China. And it's, it's you know, just as gut-wrenching and um, heart-rending as you would expect a story about uh, the revolution in China to be. But it is, there's quite a few humorous moments, there's quite a few humorous characters which sort of lighten the mood. I will say that I am getting serious Ruth Ozeki vibes from this book. Like this book reminds me so much of Tale for the Time Being and Ruth Ozeki's most recent work, um, A Book of Form and Emptiness. Like lots of uh, parallels between these two books. So yeah, very much enjoying that and making good progress in it. I have also started another buddy read of Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver, which I am buddy reading with um, Sandy from Miss Reads a Lot and her friend Sonia and we have not had our first check-in yet but I have read the first hundred pages of this and I am loving this story. I love the voice of the main narrator demon, this young boy in Appalachia. Um, he's only 10 years old, 10 or 11 years old at the current time. He has had just the shittiest luck <laughs> in his life. Um, a mom who had him when she was 18 years old, a drug addict, um, very, very poor, uh, you know, I just, I'm not going to get into the plot because I would be, it would be spoilers, but that's the basic premise that we start out with. And then it's just Demon's life. And so far he's only 11 years old in the story. Um, and so many terrible things have happened to him, but again, it's told with humor. Um, so it, it does, uh, keep you reading along and I'm just fascinated to see what's going to happen to this young man. Um, I will say that I feel very connected to this story. I'm not obviously from Appalachia, um, but there are a lot of similarities in culture and in economic um, levels for the population where I live. I live in rural Maine in one of the poorest counties in the state. And we have one of the worst opioid addiction rates in the entire country in my little county of only 35,000 people. Um, and the mixture of poverty and um, drug abuse and, uh, you know, the the stigma of being poor and how people look down on you. Um, you know, demons described right from the very beginning. His mom lives in a trailer. He lives in a trailer. Everyone around him lives in trailers. The whole trailer trash thing, like that's, that's here as well. Like so much about this book resonates for me. Um, you know, the, the kind of domestic violence that is happening um, where grandparents and friends of the family are raising children because parents are absent for this reason or that reason. Um, you know, jobs that are based on natural resource extraction that go away when those natural resources are depleted. Like all of these things, there's so many similarities. And so I feel like while this is a book about Appalachia, um, it's also a book about where I live, uh, very, very similar conditions. So yeah, really loving it. And I know a lot of people don't like a child narrator, but I think Demon is a fantastic narrator and I'm just loving him so much. I'm loving his voice so much. And I don't find, so far, I don't find this book to have fallen into the problem area of being too preachy, which I found with King Solver's last book, Unspeakable. So very excited at how much I'm enjoying this. 
And then last but not least, I finished a book, and that is The Terraformers by Annalee Newitz. Um, this is a science fiction novel. It's actually three novellas that are connected, told about the same place with some overlapping characters, but also new characters in each novella. Um, been buddy reading this with Britta Buller and I have not yet had a final check-in with Britta on this book so I don't want to go into too much detail because obviously I want to share my final thoughts with Britta um, before I uh, you know say it here on this blog but I did finish this um, and I will say that uh, I liked the ideas in this book more than I liked the story that was told um, or the way that the story came together. So that was, that's the brief synopsis I will leave you with. I will have more to say about this when I wrap this book up, but uh, I did finish this in Mid-Month Book Bash. So that is that for this month's Mid-Month Book Bash. Again, just an incredible boost in my reading uh, for the month, which I'm always appreciative of when we do these weekends. Uh, I hope that you've all been finding some great books to read, and I'll talk to you later.